Every morning when I wake up, I read everything about technology. And today, just on what you have said, genetic, uh, genetic engineering, they have already isolated gene CAS9 for precise gene editing. Okay? Children born in the uterus with very bad diseases, inherited diseases, can extract stem cells from the hip of the mother and inject through the umbilical veins and will be cured at birth. Marriott Hotel is actually adapting Alexa. Yes, it's going to replace a lot of people from housekeeping. Mm. But back in 1993 to 2007, when automation was introduced into the factory, 5.6 jobs were replaced. But that is very good. Why? Before car was introduced, there were labourers shovering uh, horse shit from the streets. Do you still want to be in that type of situation? No. Once the automobile uh, industry came, this sector where it's repairing of cars, tyres, you know, um, resurfacing of roads, this whole new industry came up. How much more jobs did it replace? But this job satisfaction is definitely much better in, in scooping up, you know, shit. So in that sense to say. So we always have to look at the both sides of the thing. You can't say that it's the bad, it's the ugly. For me, I always think it's a good thing. It's just that we need to have someone out there who is wise to always know put the kill switch on certain things. Like, for example, the two robots start talking in their own language, mm. for instance. Yeah. I think Singapore has a very good example from about 30 to 40 years ago. Right? And it's not new, it's not about, but it's also about technological disruption. Um, most of us grew up in an era where the buses had a bus conductor and we had tickets. Mm. Right? When the one-man operation uh, system came out, because it was very difficult to find uh, enough people to, uh, to take over these kinds of jobs, right? what did SBS do then? SBS retrained all their bus conductors to be drivers, or bus captains. Right? So in that sense, there is a reskilling. Now one thing about this technology that we get into about the augmentation and the automation of work, Right. It does two things for the worker. One, it de-skills right, the current competencies that you have. But it provides you the opportunity to upskill. Now, organizations there then have a choice. Right? What are they going to do when work gets automated, work gets augmented? You can either take this particular person whose 90% of his work is uh, automated, you can reskill them, or you can retrench. If you reskill, you need to find him a place. Right? And that's why I think uh, uh, Mark's point about how you, when you destroy one job, right, a few other service jobs, well, I kind of think that if you, if you, if you move these people out to the service jobs, right, because this automation and the augmentation of work increases the speed at which we do things. So more services, more products are produced. Hence, more service, right? Is there's, there's a pressure for more service. There's a pressure for more demand, right? So here we are seeing an acceleration of the whole economy, mm. in that sense, right? Mm. So there will there will always be work to be found. Problem is, the motivation to learn, to be upskilled, and whether there are resources enough to fund this person to upskill. Mm. 